Chester Zoo's mission is preventing extinction, so all of our kind of specialisms revolve around that really. We're a, a big visitor attraction here in Chester, um, and part of that is educating local, local visitors um, and also visitors from, from further afield. But we also have our collection here, which many of them are on conservation breeding programmes. So there's a number of different aspects to conservation breeding. Um, sometimes we talk about conservation breeding as in maintaining an insurance population in zoos. So for example, if the worst happened and a species became extinct in the wild, we would have an insurance, a, a backup really, of that species in, in zoos. For example, let's choose a really difficult example, orangutans. We know that actually their forests are being destroyed massively quickly for unsustainable palm oil development. There's not enough forest left and actually probably within the next 15 years, orangutans may be extinct in the wild. We know we're going to have to keep them in the zoo populations for years and years and years and years. So we've got to make sure that they're healthy, that their welfare is taken care of and the population's healthy. For some species it might be appropriate to use that as a source for reintroduction and translocation of those species back into the wild where they're safe. And for others, having these conservation breeding programmes in zoos allows us to um, research and really understand more about these species so that we can better protect them in the wild. For example, a small population of a snail from Bermuda, thought to be extinct in the wild, is discovered. It was about 25 were found and suddenly realised these were something we thought was extinct for 40 years. They get sent here for breeding and within a couple of years we've got 10,000 that we can reintroduce back into Bermuda and repopulate. Almost every species that we hold here in Chester Zoo um, and that is in any zoo around Europe is part of an EASA ex situ programme. EASA stands for the European Association of Zoos and Aquaria. EASA is really trying to push the standards of zoos and ensure that um, zoos are achieving in research, education and conservation. EASA ex situ programmes are programmes which are coordinated by different members of staff. Chester Zoo plays quite a large part in, um, in EASA, so we have staff who run 17 of these programmes and the species that we coordinate for those range from black rhinos to jaguars to a number of really critically endangered bird species like the Javan green magpie, the Ecuadorian Amazon parrot, but also some reptile species, so Komodo dragons um, and some really endangered amphibians like the mountain chicken frog for example. The Noah's Ark principle doesn't really work, you know, two by two isn't, isn't enough to have a sustainable population for the future. So actually what we really need is, you know, 200 by 200 and that means you've got a very big ark, which is kind of like where all the zoos come in. As in the wild, if you have a small fragmented population, it's going to have low genetic diversity and it's probably going to have high inbreeding. So genetic diversity really is the basis of the physical health of species and of a population. We need to be diverse genetically, all animals, including humans. We need to be genetically diverse so that we can resist a lot of disease. And maintaining as much genetic diversity as possible is what we're trying to do with our zoo populations. So that if we ever need to in the future, we can help to supplement wild populations. So our ability to be able to exchange animals between different zoos within that zoo network increases the genetic diversity and essentially joins those fragmented populations to create a big ex situ population. So an example of a working really well together to ensure conservation breeding is successful would be the black rhino um, EEP. Within Chester we have about 10 eastern black rhino at the moment but around Europe we have almost 100. So you can see that provides us with a much bigger gene pool and much more resource in order to protect that species into the future. In recent years, so in the last kind of 10 years or so, we've actually been really successful at breeding these individuals in zoos. So we've had a 5% increase annually in the population that we have in zoos. So because of that, it's given us the opportunity to look at perhaps projects um, within their home ranges, within their range states, that we could try and supplement. So get some of the genetic diversity from our zoo rhinos back out into, into the wild. So last year, we were actually able to translocate five eastern black rhino from European zoos back to their home range states. So we actually sent five to a part of Rwanda called Akagira National Park, which is an area that is very, very heavily protected to ensure that these animals are safe. But yeah, those five went back over and are now completely free ranging in that area.
Zooendocrinology Lab here at Chester Zoo is the only one in the UK and the only one that specialises in zoo endocrinology in Europe. In endocrinology is the study of hormones. Through fecal extractions, we can look for hormone called progesterone. This allows us to tell when females are coming into season. So we look for cyclicity in females when they're ovulating. We can also look to see if they're pregnant. Conservation breeding is really important for zoos to do. This allows us to maintain a viable population within zoos, which can then be helped to support the wild population. One of the main species we focus on is black rhino. We had the opportunity to uh, be involved in the, a satellite lab out in Kenya. Um, and one of the things we wanted to make sure was that some of this, this data is used out there with KWS and the veterinary service there so that they can monitor their own black rhino uh, in situ uh, to try and help that uh, population establish itself better in that environment. The work we do here is so applied that you can literally walk out and, and see um, the kind of product of your work. So what you've helped to achieve is actual baby animals that are contributing to a bigger population. So it's, it's really great. Thank you.